Hey everyone, Leo with Dreaming Tree and welcome to the assembly video for our flower bouquet paper sculpture. Something new, something different. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we're gonna be making some flowers, uh, but this time they're just gonna be uh, not on stems. They're going flat onto our beautiful paper sculpture. So let's just jump right in here. You're gonna begin with a full sheet of 12 by 12 paper. We are going with a gold foil. Uh, you can make it whatever you want, obviously, depending on your personal preference. Now, many of you have done this before. Uh, you're, when you cut your files out, you're going to have a little piece like this. And this little piece is just to help you uh, line up this piece. Okay, This piece your machine is actually going to cut. It's 11.4 inches wide, as wide as it can go. And the reason we have this piece is to help you center this properly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this little piece here and you can use a pencil if you want, uh, whatever you wanna use. You pop it all the way in the top left corner and I'm actually just gonna use, you can use an X-Acto blade. I'm just gonna etch a line into the corner here, the inside corner of this piece, just so I can see where it goes, okay? If you wanna draw it in, that's fine. And I actually didn't make it pronounced enough. I'm gonna try that one more time here. Make sure it's flush on the left, flush on top. And you can, if you're using foil, you can just kind of etch it in. If you're using cardstock, maybe just draw it in. Okay, so I have a little, basically we're creating score marks. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. You can do a third one. For those of you that do print and cut, it's kind of like creating little registration marks. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw. Again, you can use a pencil whatever it is you want, it's just a reference point. <clears throat> so for me, I'm gonna take and align that with those two marks that I made and you can see how it's perfectly centered. Okay, so this is gonna get glued down flat onto the main 12 by 12 piece here. Okay, so since we're applying this full 12 by 12 sheet onto, well, I'm sorry, this, this cut sheet onto a 12 by 12, there's a lot of surface area here. We don't really need to put a lot of glue on this I really don't want to warp the paper or have bits of, well, the lines of the glue showing through. So go easy on the glue here. <clears throat> a little bit will go a long way. Line it up with those little markers that you created. And then of course you still want to kind of give it just a visual appraisal, if you will. Now I'm using foil, so I have some extra time to kind of nudge things around if I need to. <clears throat> now we're gonna have another layer that's gonna go on top of this to create a matted frame. But we're gonna do that after we put everything together. You can see we have these two pieces. The layer behind there is a little bit of gold showing through there to create like a mat. So that looks really nice. We'll, we'll work on that in a little bit, okay? But let's start building the scene here, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with these pieces here. This is the main part of our vase, okay? And everything is gonna go on top of that. So before we, before we get too far into this, we do want to create some dimension with these leaves. Uh, it's gonna have to be a little subtle, uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of an S shape with this. So the center part, I wanna bring it up uh, and then I'm gonna have it come down and then back up. Okay, so what we can do, can train the tip of this up a little bit. So what I did was I put the leaf between my finger and the dowel and just kind of raised it up about 45 degrees and ran the dowel through. And you can see what that did. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna repeat that same motion and that same process, but from the center. Okay, and you can see what that did. Okay, and then from here, Lift that up a little bit. I'm gonna go back here, make that a little more pronounced, and then like that. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with this leaf here. I want the tip to come up, and I want the middle to kind of come down a little bit. So I've got like a little S shape, very subtle. Okay, so that layer is gonna go down first, and you'll notice on this piece that there are two little markers here. And those markers are gonna hug the very bottom of our vase. And let's take a look here. There should be some other markers here as well to help you with the positioning. Like for example, 
there's one marker here that's going to hug this round part of the vase. Okay, so right there, you want it just to the left of that. Okay, and let's see if there are any other markers that I want to show you. There's also one here that's going to hug this corner part right here. Okay, so we're going to leave these leaves free floating. We're going to apply glue to the vase and to this part here where the hydrangea is going to end up. Okay, so let's flip this over and let's begin applying our glue again, mostly onto the vase and this little part here. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of surface area to cover. So do your best and I would not do that on top of your beautiful pattern piece. Just go easy on the glue here. I'm going to take my finger and kind of dab the glue a little bit. You don't need to get glue on every single inch of this. That's going to be nearly impossible. Just need enough, mostly on the top and bottom and a little bit here in the center. And then don't forget up here, just a few little dots. You just want it to stay. Okay. And again, going around the perimeter mostly and just kind of hit that with your finger in case you got too much glue in any of the spots. Okay, and then very carefully pop that into position using those little markers that we talked about. Like that. Okay, let me see if I've got that lined up correctly, and I do. Okay, let's take a look. Should be nice and nice and straight up and down, and it is. So as long as we get that one in place, the rest of it is going to go nice and smooth for us. Okay, so next we're going to grab this layer here and we're going to do the same thing with these leaves. Okay, I'm going to take and you can curl them up like this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to curl them up. I'm going to curl this one up and then right here at the middle of it, just kind of curl it down just to kind of give it that S shape. Okay, all right, so now we're going to take this and glue this right on top of the existing vase, matching it up as accurately as we can. And we do not need to put any glue on the actual leaves. If you want, what we can do is put a little foam square behind this uh, and also one here to create some additional dimension. But again, let's focus that glue around the perimeter. And I'm actually going to do the inside first, just a few little dots here and there. And it may actually be easier just to do some dots. Okay, and that's all you really need. These little dots will do a lot of work because this is a very delicate little piece, but we do want to get glue around the perimeter because we definitely want that to stay in place. And we'll flip it over. And all we want to do here is just match this up with the existing part of our vase. Give it a little nudge, make sure everything is sitting correctly and just press that down into place. Perfect. Okay. So you can see here that, and I'm going to do this now. I'm going to take, and I'm going to put a little foam square on the back of that right there just to create some separation there. Cause we're going to end up putting a rose there. And then just to keep this in place, we can flip this over and put one little foam square on that. And that's going to help create some additional dimension too. Now, what I noticed here is that the bottom of this, I didn't get enough glue on there. So I'm going to grab a scrap piece of paper and I'm literally just going to take and pop that right under there and paint a little extra glue on there. And this is another reason why you don't need to obsess about getting glue on every single inch of everything. Cause you can always go back in and clean things up. Okay. It's not a problem. So now, Again, we're just kind of working our way up here. I've got my, got my vase. Okay. So we're going to flip this over and apply our glue to the actual final layer of the vase. And I'm going to do dots here. I think that's that way I can get kind of a thicker layer of glue that won't dry out as fast. Okay. Just little dots. And if you happen to, squeeze out too big of a dot. You can always just hit it with your finger, thin it out a little bit. Okay. Just take your time here. Here we 
go. That should do it. If you're using gold foil like I am, be careful not to blemish the foil with your gluey finger. There we go, press that down. And pardon my head, perfect. Okay, so the vase is in place. <clears throat> and now we're gonna start doing some layering here. Uh, the hydrangeas, as you can see here, uh, you've got a series of little cutouts here and what we wanna do You'll notice that there's similar cutouts on this piece here, so you know exactly where to put it. Now, before we do that, there are some of these petals that are kind of loose, and what you can do is take and curl them up so that this back layer, which helps with the positioning of everything else, will also act as a dimensional part of this piece. Okay, so I'm getting a real thin dowel, and I'm literally just taking each of the petals and curling it around the dowel to lift up those petals and give them some dimension so they're not so flat. The whole idea here is to make this come alive and make it not so flat. I wanna make it look as realistic as possible. As you can see, I also took my time and inked as many of these petals as I could, as many as I could reach. And of course, we've got a series of individual ones that we're gonna layer on top of this. And you can see exactly where we're gonna layer them because we have a series of little holes here. You can see there's a bunch of holes there. We're gonna use those holes as guides for placement of the additional petals. So it's pretty much gonna be a no-brainer sort of operation here, okay? All right, so I think I've got all the petals curled up that I can. I maybe have one more here that I could give it a little life to, there we go. All right, so again, like I mentioned earlier, we've got these little funky looking cutouts and you just wanna kind of move it, shuffle it around until you have it lined up correctly. So that is correct right there. And what we're gonna do is just apply glue to this little circle part here. Keep it on the green part. And it's the only place you actually need to apply the glue. All right, and let's find those cutouts again. There they are, line that up as accurately as you can and press down, perfect. Okay, so now we have 12 of these little individual petals and I'm gonna do the same thing to these. I'm gonna curl these up and we are going to glue them down onto the little holes that we have here. And then eventually, once this is all done and we're done with the paper part of it, I highly recommend going back and getting some rhinestones or preferably some white pearls and gluing down the white pearls at the centers of the hydrangeas. I think that would look very nice. Okay, but we're gonna go through and just get all of these curled up and trained so that they're all ready to be attached and installed or glued down, whatever you wanna call it. For some reason, as a guy, I like the word install. Maybe it's just because I worked with computers a lot, and I still do, I guess you could say, but I'm installing it. That and I work on a lot of stuff around the house, and usually we're doing an installation, but we're gluing stuff down. And uh, yeah, so we'll get these all good to go. Definitely spend some time inking this uh, and all these little pieces. If you're gonna if you're gonna spend the time to make this. Um, Definitely spend the extra time inking it. It will really set it off and make it look that much better. Okay, so that is my advice. I know I've seen a lot of people on Facebook lately showing off their projects and saying, hey, this is the first time I inked and I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I love seeing that. Just remember, if you haven't inked before, you can practice on scrap paper. It's just paper, so don't worry too much. Okay, so we have uh, these, it's like th one, two, three, there's like kind of four, um, there's four circles going right through the center of this thing. We're gonna, we're gonna first focus on those four. And you'll notice how on some of these, the, um, the, one of the petals is a little bit smaller. We're gonna keep those petals over on the right-hand side on the center. 
okay? Because we want to try to make this as uh, uniform and full as possible. I guess uniform is not a good word to use when you're dealing with, with flowers, but I'll just say uniform. Okay, so there's one. And we're just going to go down the row here. Just throw a little bit of glue around that center. Find the next little hole. And now you see here, you have the smaller petal. That's a perfect place to put it since we have the larger petal right up there. Okay, and you'll notice that a few of these are smaller, some are larger. Just, uh, just grab whatever, float your boat, and just fit them in there nicely. There's really no rhyme or reason to this. It's just a matter of getting them all in place and just making it your own. So with this one, I'm going to take the smaller petal and kind of move it, angle it up towards the little flower that I had in there previously. And then we can start working our way around here. So this one here, I got the smaller side that's going to go up against that flower so that they don't fight as much. That's really why we have that smaller petal there, just to give you a little room, a little extra room. I can actually angle it that way a little bit. There we go. Okay. Just find a happy medium for all these flowers to sit and live. There we go. And I'm going to take the smaller one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the bigger one over there. Like that. Just make sure you're pretty much on that center. You're going to cover that up with a pearl or a rhinestone later, so don't worry too much about it. Okay, moving on here. I'm going to bring this smaller petal down here. And you can kind of tuck it under whatever you need to do to get it to fit in there. Okay. There we go. Let's bring that one down there. Press that into place. And I've got four left. Just like that. Pop that one there. Don't forget those pearls. They'll make a huge difference. You don't want to leave little holes in, in the middle of the flowers, obviously. Okay, and then I'm going to put this one here. I got one more at the bottom and then one more there in the center. I'm going to put the small little petal closest to the other flowers. There we go, so they're not fighting too much. And this last one's going to go right here and pop that into place. Okay, so we got a beautiful, nice and full. And once this is all completely dry, and even after you get your uh, little pearls installed, you can take and pull these up a little bit more to really create some nice depth. Okay. So that is it for our hydrangeas. Now let's take a look at the little daisy. Pretty straightforward. This is, this is the little guy here. Okay. And what we're going to do with this one, again, grab a thin dowel, be very gentle with this. What we're going to do is kind of take and pinch the, whoops, pinch the tip of this and just curl it back. And then we're going to also lift it up, okay? But you can just curl first and then pull it up. We want it kind of comma shaped, like a comma. So like it's coming up a little bit and then it's drooping down. And for the center of this, we're actually using a yellow pom-pom. Um, if you don't have a yellow pom-pom, just find a nice large piece of bling to pop on there. All right, now we can take and curve this up. Just You're literally just taking and creasing it at the center. Okay, and then if you want, you can kind of grab it like this and give it a little spin between your fingers. And that's what you want to end up with, something like that. Okay, we'll do the same thing here. Just going to curl this around my dowel. Be gentle here because 
the amount of paper that is holding this to the center is very little and you get too rough with it, you will rip it off. Uh, I'm going to try not to do it here, but I have done it in the past with other little daisies and it's not, ha it's not fun having to go back and recut things, but it's not the end of the world, I guess. Let's just try to avoid that. Okay, go ahead and bend them up like so. And then I'm going to give that a little spin between my fingers. Okay, we're going to join these two together like this, but we want to offset them. So when we pop one inside of the other, we don't want each of the sets of petals right on top of the other set. You want to rotate it just a little bit so that they're kind of like that. Okay, so you don't want to put them right on top of each other. You want to like that, that's not right. You want to rotate it a little bit so that they are, well, now it's all dried up. I shouldn't have moved it. Hold on, let me see if I can pull this off before it completely sets. There we go. Whew, that was a close one. And that's what happens when you try to teach. Let me just do that one more time. I had it right the first time and I tried to illustrate what not to do. And then the glue, of course, decided in that one second that it was ready to just stick. Okay, there we go. That's what we want. We want it nice and full. And again, after, after we get it in place, we can take and kind of fluff these up a little bit. I'm not gonna do it just yet. Okay, uh, also we have a little stamen center for this. It's this piece here. And with this, I'm just gonna take this and kind of curl this between my fingers to get those very tips of the stamen to kind of curl up. You might need to kind of fold them a little bit just to get them started, like so. And then just kind of curl them between your fingers, like that. Of course, again, I did, I did ink this as well. Perfect. I'll throw a little glue in the center. Take this piece and pop it right in there. Make sure it's nice and centered. Okay. Let's take a look. That looks pretty good. Give it a little nudge down. Okay. And finally, again, um, find yourself a little pearl or something. Uh, I am going to get the hot glue going here because I'm going to use um, hot glue to get this in place. And if you are using a small little pom-pom like I am to create the center of this, when you pop it in there, you really got to push it down and flatten it out really good. Okay. And that's what I'm going to do here in a second. My hot glue gun just takes a few seconds to, to get going. There it is. Let's get that glue flowing. Nice and hot. There we go. Okay. Just throw a little glue in the center there. Like I said, preferably some hot glue. Give it a little twirl so we don't have any of those little fuzzies and then press that down nice and nice and strong. Okay. And there we go. Beautiful. So there is our little flower. And again, once we get this all in place, I'll go ahead and create some more separation on these petals. Just don't want to over overwork them right now. Okay. Okay. So this flower does have some greenery on it and you're going to need these two pieces. Um, we cut this out kind of, well, just this part of it, out twice because it is so thin we didn't want to risk it ripping so we're making it two layers thick but we'll need to be pretty careful with the glue here definitely start with the little circles at the ends of each of these little stems and then get as much glue as you can on these within reason obviously it's a really delicate little piece so it's gonna be impossible to get glue on every inch of it but do your best. Okay. And let's line that up. We'll start at the tip here. Just match that up as accurately as you can. Okay. Press that down. Now, because this piece is so tiny, these little sections can kind of move individually. So you may need to just give every little section a little extra love. And I had some glue that squirted out of there. That's why I'm just kind of dabbing it like this to get that glue off. OK, 
Okay, so that thickened it up nicely. That glue is gonna dry nice and transparent, so I'm not overly concerned about it. Uh, with these leaves here, again, you can take a little dowel and just kind of curl them up or down. I'll do this one down very gently. Again, it's a very small little piece. You don't want to rip it. Definitely shape it. Give it a little dimension. And then I'll probably save this for last. The tips of these, these little guys here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You've got these eight little tiny flowers that are gonna go on there. Okay, so with this guy here, you can see this little element here. That's where he's gonna get glued down. And we can actually do that with a foam square to create a little extra dimension. So let's do that, throw a little foam square right on that little circle. And then right here where this little circle is, is where we're gonna put a little bit of glue and put our final flower in place. Make sure you get that nice and centered. And I'm gonna wait, like I said, until that's fully set before I start playing with the little pet individual petals there. I'm gonna wait, okay? All right, so next, we've got some roses to build. We have two roses, one that's a little bit smaller than the other, okay? And you can see here, they're separated out by color. And the larger one has one, two, three, four, five, six layers. And the smaller one, you wanna organize these um, from largest to smallest, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so the same amount, uh, except of course one is just a little bit smaller. And then we do have a little stamen set. One's larger, one's smaller. Smaller one goes there, larger one goes there. Don't forget about these little flowers. We'll put those on in a little bit. And then of course we have uh, this is gonna go with the smaller rose. That's gonna go underneath, okay? So we're almost on the home stretch here. Can't wait to see what this will look like once it's actually in the frame. I have a feeling it's gonna look great. But anyway, let's start off with one of the roses here. And we're gonna start with the bottom most layer. I'm gonna take a, it's about a quarter inch dowel. I'm gonna flip it over and place the dowel at about the base of the petal, lift it up about 45 degrees and run the dowel through. Okay, so just about 45 degrees, not a full 90. Okay, and then we can take and I can curl just the tips of these down. So I'm just placing it up against the dowel with my finger and just pulling that down. Okay, so that's, that's how we want the first layer. And the second layer is gonna go roughly the same way. Okay, and actually with the second layer, I'm just gonna take and just curl the petals down like so. This one's kind of a little funky. And I'm gonna crease this up a little bit. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take and just apply a little bit of glue to the center of the second piece. And I'm gonna glue that. You're gonna use a little hole in the center as your guide and you wanna offset them. So again, don't put them right on top of each other. Offset it, rotate it just a little bit, keep the hole in place, run it right in the center like that. And there we go. First two layers are in place, getting a nice dimensional rows. Next, don't forget to go in order. This next section here, I'm gonna use a little bit of a thicker dowel here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna curl the petals around the dowel like this. Okay, just like that on all four. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit, just like that. And again, we're gonna offset and glue that down. We're just trying to create some nice dimension on this flower. Okay, it's gonna go right there. Just match it up with the hole, petals offset. Okay, next layer, we're gonna kinda of do the opposite. 
And I'm going to take this dowel and I'm going to curl the pedals up this time, up against the dowel. I need a thinner dowel. Let's try this one. Kind of, kind of ease it in like that. Don't start in the middle. Start on one of the sides and just kind of roll it and then just push it up against the other side. That's to avoid creasing it right down the center. Okay, here we go. You can kind of fold it a little bit and flip her over. A little bit of glue on the back. And of course, got glue right in the center. I want to get rid of that so I can actually see through the middle of it. And let's offset it. Get it lined up with that hole and press that down. That hole is going to ensure that we're keeping everything center. There we go. Okay, next one. And with these, I'm going to take and we're going to curl the pedals up. And we're actually going to fold this up a little bit. Okay, like that. And we want this to start coming in more as we get towards the center. Okay, because the center is going to be a little bit different. And again, offset. So not like this, but like this. There we go. Looking nice and full. You see how nice and full that looks. And also random. Okay. All right. So finally, with this last piece, this last piece, we, we definitely need to uh, get a, this is a quarter inch dowel. Uh, we're going to do the same thing here and cup it from the center like so. But then we also need to bring it in. We're actually going to try to kind of create a little cup out of this. Uh, picture a like the uh, the center of a like a, a I guess a rose that hasn't budded yet. You know how that looks, okay? So we kind of want it like that, which is going to require um, some some quick acting glue to hold this shape. Okay, that's why I'm getting my hot glue fired up. Uh, and also, you know what I should probably do? You can actually, if you want, well, I guess I already I already. Uh, folded it. Well, you know what I can do? I can do this. I just realized that I'm going to actually bend it the other way because I want the inking to show up. And on this piece, since I'm really curling it and folding it in this way, the ink is on the outside. I want the ink to be more prominent. Okay. So I just kind of reversed it and you can see, you can see the ink on there where the inside doesn't have any. Okay. And again, I'm just going to try to hold this shape which means that we just need to put a little dot of glue where this little guy here was making contact with the other pedal. So we'll bring it back in and just kind of hold that in place because you know hot glue is going to, it's going to work quickly and we just want it to dry quickly and you can see it's already holding it. So this pedal here, is making contact with this pedal right at this point here. Okay. And so I want to apply a little bit of glue just to that. And I mean, it literally doesn't need to be a lot. It just needs to be one little drop. Sometimes that's hard to do with hot glue, but do your best and just bring that back in. Try to kind of keep it somewhat together and tight. Okay. I want it to be a nice cup shape. And that just leaves one more little section here, right there, where that is making contact with that pedal. I just want to throw a little dot of glue on there. That's it. That was it. Just that little guy. And there we have a beautiful little cup. Okay. And that glue pretty much is set. I'm going to hold that for just a second. There we go. Okay, we'll throw a little bit of glue on the bottom of this, like so. Okay, just try to match that up with the little hole there in the center. Um, this one, this little centerpiece, it may be beneficial to use hot glue. Okay, and that's what I think I'm going to do, just so that I can set it, I can pop it in there, it'll set, and I can forget and move on and not wonder if it's going to hold for me. Hot glue can be my best friend sometimes. It can also be 
not so good of a friend just because I feel like it gets a little sloppy sometimes, but that definitely looks fantastic. And again, once everything's set, if you wanna take and kind of fluff up some of the petals, you can do that. Um, but last step here is to assemble the little stamen part. Okay, and all we're gonna do for that, I'm gonna just start with a little hibachi stick and use that to start wrapping it around itself. So we're literally just taking and wrapping it around itself. It's a small little piece, but it's very doable. So just start wrapping it around itself. And then for the rest of this, just apply a little bit of glue right at the very bottom where you have that little straight edge and just continue wrapping it until you've wrapped it all the way down. You wanna keep it nice and straight at the bottom there. Very gently, keep on going until you get to the end and then just make sure you hold on to that for a few moments while it sets and then you can take and kind of spray these out and create some nice separation between them. And we're just gonna take a little hot glue and pop that in the center of our flower. Okay, just separate that out as best as you can and then just throw a little bit of hot glue on the very bottom of this and grab it by the tip and just drop it right in there if you want to use a little hibachi stick kind of move it around get it where you want it there we go okay and i can see here from how it's sitting that I'm gonna to wanna to kind of scrunch this together a little bit more at the top, but for the most part, that looks great. Okay, now this little guy, we're gonna take these leaves here, and again, I'm gonna train these out, give them a little bit of dimension, and maybe train this back a little bit up to the middle. So it's got that little S shape going there. Okay, and this guy, I'm gonna glue him down right here so that it's coming down like that. Uh, and actually, you know what? Let's add some dimension to that. Let me use a foam square. Okay, I'm gonna pop that right there. I want that leaf coming down like that. And then our flower is gonna go right there, just like that. And that is gonna have to flatten out a little bit we don't have to flatten it out too much though because what we can do since this is going in a shadow box let's add let's add a couple layers of foam squares i'm going to do uh i'm going to do two side by side it doesn't need to be completely on that piece either it's going to be covered up so and you can like i said you can stack these if you want and then that way it'll keep the flower nice and full and won't flatten it out so much Okay, no one's gonna see that, especially because it's in a shadow box. All right, so let's take our flower, make sure it's nice and centered, and just press that right onto the foam square. There you go, and you can see how it maintains the roundness of the flower without flattening it, flattening it out too much. Okay, so we've got a lot of beautiful dimension going on here, and don't worry about this guy here. We're going to just kind of lift these up later on to create some more separation. I should probably use this end of it, but be careful with this because these are some delicate little petals. So I would maybe try to avoid getting your fingers in there and use a tool like this to really help you kind of create that separation. Okay, there you can see how much nicer that looks when this is all nice and full. Okay, so we have one more rose to put together. And then of course we have that little frame with the matting that we also want to put together. Here we go, let's get this petal out from underneath our little rose. Create some nice separation, there we go. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have thus far. Looks great. Create some more separation there. Okay, looks great. All right, moving on here uh, to our last little flower. 
I'm going to start off with a, this is like a 3 8 inch dowel, and we're going to take and curl these petals down. That might not be big enough, or that might be too big, I should say. Uh, that is the same exact dowel. So let's go and have something in between. All right, it's about a quarter inch dowel. And we're just going to take right at the base, lift this up about 90 degrees and run that dowel through. Okay, just like that. You can kind of curl these up a little bit or just crease them up. That's our bottom layer going to the next largest size. Okay, and I'm going to take and do the same thing here. Just fold those down or train them down, I should say. And then you can kind of lift them up like so. Just making sure my other rows looks good. And we'll flip her over, apply some glue around the little center. I'm going to offset this and glue it down. Oops. There we go. Try to create some nice separation. Okay, next layer. This is where we're going to start curling things up. So let's place the whoops, let's place the dowel in the center and just kind of curl it around the dowel. And you know one other thing too that you can do with the first two layers, and it's not too late. Grab a little bit of a thinner dowel. And I'm just going to take and just bring the tips down a little bit and just make that a little more pronounced. Just at the very tip. And you don't even have to do the whole thing. You can just do little sections. You can also curl it off to the side a little bit. The idea is to just make them as random as you can. Okay, so this one's coming up. You can kind of crease them up a little bit. And let's throw a little bit of glue here. Again, offset. Line up that center, press it down. You can see the separation between the petals and what we're trying to achieve here. Just trying to achieve some nice dimension. Okay, next one here. I'm gonna grab and do the same thing here, just kind of curling it and cupping it down the center. I'm not starting in the center, I'm starting on one side and just kind of pushing and rolling this thing as I push the other side up. Okay, however you achieve that is fine. It's just, that's the way I do it, just so I don't get creases down the center. Okay, and then if you wanna get even fancier, you can take and just kinda of curl, maybe use something thinner, curl the very tips of that down, just to make it as random as possible. So there's, there's a, a challenge for you. How random can you make, how random can you make your rows? The idea is to get as much you can see what I mean by that. You can see there's highlights here, there's little shadows there, it's brighter here, it's darker there. That's what creates the interest. So you really are trying to uh, add shadows and highlights without really adding any color. Okay, so we're just trying to make it look as interesting as possible. Okay, again, matching up the little center hole, offsetting the petals so that each one has its day in the sun. And moving right along here. Okay, gonna use a thinner dowel because we've got a smaller petal. And same thing here, we're cupping it in, kind of wrapping it around, trying to get those petals up like that. There we go. And you wanna get fancy here, you can take and kind of go up on some, go down on some others. Up on some, down on some others, whatever. Whatever you want to do, make it your own. Let's cut this in. We're trying to kind of have it coming in and kind of hugging the center once we get to the center. Okay, again, offset, don't go right on top. Rotate it so each of the petals is nice and visible. Okay, there we go. You can see, whoops. Don't do that. Hold it in place. Usually that's enough uh, for it to stick, but in that case, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. Okay, and I also didn't get it centered, so let me fix that. 
I'm getting too excited to see what this thing's going to end up looking like, and I'm kind of rushing things here a little bit, so don't do that. Take your time. There we go. Let's see how much nice dimension and separation we have between all those layers. Okay, so again, for this last section, we are going to create that little cup. Now, this is my texture side that I inked. Now, what I've been doing here is uh, I've been kind of curling it that way, but I'm actually rotate it or flip it, and I'm going to go the other way this time. Okay, so I do need to, whoops, I do need to create that little cup. So I'm going to do that first. So I'm going to cup the petal, kind of turn it into a U shape, like so. And we're going to take it and bring it in like that. And you can really just kind of wrap it around itself until you form that little cup. And now you can see that when I did it that way, all that beautiful inking is visible on the outside, where if I did it the other way, it would get lost inside. We don't want that. So it's like the third time I've done that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fire up my hot glue because we're going to need just a little dot of hot glue to kind of keep this in place. And there's three points that we need to add glue to. And you know what? Instead of, might be able to just apply glue to the surface of this. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that because I don't want that glue visible from the inside. So this one is making contact with this, uh, with this petal at two points. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to flip out this petal here, and I'm just going to do two and one. Okay, what's going on here? Come on, glue. There it goes. I'm going to put a little dot right on there, and of course, I say little, and I get a big old glob, and that's okay. And then on the other petal there, and then we'll just close this up, because that's where it's making contact, and just hold that in place. And maybe, just maybe, we may need to give it a little nudge and help that glue spread out a little bit. I'm not sure that I got it. Well, we'll find out here in a second. I think I got it on one side, but the other side did not. So I'm going to go back in with just a little extra dot of glue. Okay, so that's in place. And you know what? It's kind of naturally just holding that other one in place automatically. So I'm not even going to need to put glue on there. You just have to feel it out. Okay, so I'm just going to throw a little dot of glue, hot glue, on the bottom of this guy, and again, just match up the hole. And pop that into place. And if necessary, we can take this layer that's just underneath it and bring that up so that it cups it even more and follow suit with the rest of the layers until it looks nice and natural. Okay, and just like we did the first time, we've got the little layer for the stamen. I lost my, oh, there's my hibachi stick. Start on one end and use that hibachi stick to get it, to get it rolling. Okay, you can pull that out once you've got it rolled up, maybe a half a turn or a full turn. And then just apply some glue on this straight part here. If you got a little too much on there, just dab it off and just continue rolling it onto itself, making sure that it stays nice and straight at the bottom, all the way down to the end. You might get a little glue on your fingers here, and that's okay. I never said I never get glue on my fingers. I just wipe it off really fast. Okay, once you get to the end, press and hold while you're holding. Great time to Kind of separate these a little bit. Fluff them out as much as you can. By then, it should be pretty dry, in which case we'll throw a little dot of hot glue on there. And if you're having a hard time uh, getting your finger in there, you can always put this on the end of a stick. And of course, there's that little wispy guy. You can use that to help you get it in. Just make sure your hot glue is nice and hot. And there it is, okay? And this one here, we already have the place for it, okay? And I'm gonna actually 
do the same thing I did last time, except this time I only need one layer of uh, foam squares, I think. I think that will do the trick. That one's already popped out it a little bit from that green part. I don't think I need to add a second layer. I do need it to stick though. There we go. Okay. And that's what I don't like about hot glue is those little wispy things. It's like cobwebs. All right. And get that nice and centered onto that green, that little green piece there. And there we go. Okay. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Don't forget. Now, actually, you know what I just did? Uh, and that's okay. You know what? I covered up a few of the little sections where these flowers go. If you put them on before, it's okay. Well, you can actually rotate that out a little bit. These little guys here, uh, don't forget, you can also put a tiny little pearl or something in the center of these. But the idea here is just to put a little dot of glue. And that was a huge dot of glue. I'm just going to dab that with my finger, pull some of that off. Each of these little circles here, you can put one of these tiny little flowers on. And don't skip that because it looks really cool. Well, obviously, you don't want to skip it because otherwise you're just going to be left with a, a random green circle, <laughs> which isn't going to look very good. Uh, but that's it. Uh, don't forget the little flowers. Um, don't forget to put little pearls in the middle of the hydrangeas. But look at that. That is stunning. Uh, I want to see what it looks like in a frame. Oh, wait a minute. We're not done yet. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Don't forget about the actual frame that goes around it. I guess you could do without it. But we have these two layers here. Um, the gold is going to go underneath the white because it's got that natural matte look that we wanted to achieve. So let's go ahead and apply our glue to this. Let me move this out of the way so I don't accidentally get glue on my beautiful foil. And we're going to take and actually use, um, use some foam squares to elevate this to create a nice dimensional matted frame around it. So it's like a frame inside of a frame. It's going to look great. Okay, so let's get this onto our gold piece. So the exterior, like the, the, uh, the outside perimeter is going to match up perfectly. And all we'll have is just the inside reveal the mat like that. Perfect. Press that down into place. You could even maybe, uh, there's a card that we have in this bundle that features some butterflies. Could even maybe add some butterflies to this if you really want to get crazy. Okay. Okay. So again, that's going to go just like this. And I guess you can put it down flat if you want. Um, that looks great, but I, I want to create some shadows on there as well. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to break out my foam squares. Luckily, I just bought some nice large ones too. So that's a bonus. Less work. These are half inch. So I'm excited about that. And we're going to start in the corners. Oh, let's not blemish this. Okay, that looks good. Okay. One here. Here. There, there, and then in between. I want to keep all these nice and afloat, nice and straight. This is going to be a great piece. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, um, kind of like we did with uh, the set of befitting birthday cards, uh, the bundle doesn't come with them, but we're going to include as a bonus freebie, some vinyl captions so that you can add a caption to the glass. Um, and it's gonna, we're gonna do one for home. We'll do one for spring. Okay, but don't forget again to put 
those pearls on the hydrangeas. So take a look at the final photo uh, after I get all that in place and get it photographed on the website. So you can see what that is going to look like. These, that's one thing I don't like about this brand of foam squares. The backing is not cut very well and it doesn't come off as cleanly. That's okay though. No one's gonna see that really, but it's still a pain in the in the you know what. There we go. Maybe I just need better fingernails or something. Okay, almost there. Uh, and you can see the frame here. It's wider on the sides and not as wide on the top and bottom. So just make sure you get the orientation correct. Make sure all your stickies or sticky backs are off. And we want to make sure we line that up. Pardon my head. Oops. Make sure you line that up with the background as accurately as you can. There we go. Perfect. I think. Yep. Something seems a little off to me. Looks like it's kind of sideways. Nope, just the angle. It's fine. All right, shadow box time. Let's take a look at what it will ultimately look. I have two different shadow boxes. I found this one at Joann's, which I thought looked kind of cool. I'm not sure if it will look good with this project. We're about to find out. Let me see what that will look like. Pop that in there. Okay. I dig it. Look at that. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to put it in the white. I think the uh, I think that wood maybe is a little overpowering. Uh, oh, and again, don't forget to put the little flowers on. I'm going to say it again. Let's take a look and see what it looks like in the white. Pop that right in there. Put the back on. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a good one, guys. I love this. This is going to my house, actually. I'm in love with this, and I hope you guys are too. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please take a moment, visit us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. While you're there, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications anytime we release a new product, whether it be paid or free. And I cannot wait to see your version of this. Uh, if you make this or anything from our new bundle, I'd love to see it, and so would the rest of our community. So head over to your Facebook and do a search for Dreaming Tree Official. That's where you'll find myself and over 40,000 other dreamers that inspire us daily. So I hope you had a blast. I know I did. Really can't stop looking at this. It's gorgeous. And as always, I look forward to crafting with you again. Hey, thanks for crafting along with me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, check out some of our other videos and also please consider hitting that subscribe button. And don't forget to visit our site and check out our free SVG section where we have over 140 free SVG files complete with assembly videos. I look forward to crafting with you soon.